What's up, podcaster? Welcome to the video. Today we have the ultimate walkthrough of Podbean. So if you've been debating which podcast host to go with and Podbean is on your list, this video will help you make the right decision. We're gonna walk through Podbean and its wealth of features with the head of marketing over at Podbean, John. John is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to podcasting and specifically Podbean. So you will know everything that you need to know to make your choice. And if at any point you decide that you wanna try Podbean out for yourself, there is a link that you can use in the description box and the pinned comment of this video that you can use to get access to a free trial of Podbean. So let's get right into it. Let's hear from John and let's walk through Podbean. Let's do it. John, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. So today I am putting John and Podbean on the chopping block. John is the head of marketing over at Podbean. So who better to ask why Podbean than John? So John, take it away. The floor is yours. Certainly. So for anyone that has not heard my spiel yet, or those who might have met me at, like I'd say, a conference or whatnot, I usually say the same opening salvo, and I'm glad that I get to expand that today. Um, I usually say that Podbean is the place that gives you all the things and tools that you could want to start, manage, and uh, do basically anything you could want to with a podcast. Uh, we offer a lot of different tools, very easy way to upload your content. We have monetization tools. We have different promotional avenues. Uh, we have a full ads marketplace where you can monetize your podcast and where businesses and podcasters can also upload ads to run their ads on various shows as well. We have a patron program. Uh, the list really goes on and the features that we offer are fairly uh, limitless here. And the analytics that we have, we'll dive into to showcase how powerful those can be as well. But the main tagline to remember about Podbean is anything that you could want to do with your podcast, we give you the ability to do. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And just to make sure you can see my screen. So this here is our podcast dashboard. So when you log into your account, this is going to be one of the first things that you see. Uh, with Podbean, we offer the ability to not only host one channel, but you can host multiple channels under our umbrella. Uh, so you can micromanage a variety of different podcast channels all under one username and login. But what I've decided to do today is just log right in to what you would see on one of those channels here. So as soon as you log in, the first thing that you see is your podcast dashboard. And what's great about your podcast dashboard is it gives you a couple of pieces of information about your overall performance on your podcast. Now, one thing I'm going to go back to real quick is to show you what it looks like when you're micromanaging a bunch of different podcast channels here. So you should see here that it says dashboard, new episode, good morning, my podcast. If I click over on the left-hand side here of our podcast dashboard and click on podcast channels, you should see that I have one, two, three different channels here. So I'm able to micromanage those all under one umbrella. And what's great is you can actually just click on this publish button here or right from the home screen, you can go ahead and click this new episode button. And this is going to bring you through the dashboard and the wizard to publish a brand new episode. So if I click on new episode, click how the world works, then I have the ability to upload a file from my desktop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose just any one of our audio episodes. Now, what's great with Podbean is Podbean gives you the ability to both upload audio and video content, as well as a variety of different file types. Uh, dependent on the plan that you're on, you have access to those as well here. And what I can do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and put test description here for the description and the title. Now, anything that you put into these title and description fields will show up on the various directories that accept those. And what I mean by that is, let's say you put hyperlinks in here saying, hey, follow me over on this piece of social media or follow me here and here. You can insert that content here. What's great is when you publish your episode, the episode is also going to publish to your Podbean podcast website. Any podcast that is hosted with Podbean gets their own website that they can use to showcase their podcast. And it's pretty customizable. We have a lot of great features on it. Um, and they are mobile optimized websites as well. So not only do they look great on a desktop environment, they also look great on an iOS or Android environment as well. And you may be noticing a few things here. So on the right hand side, you have the ability to change your artwork for each individual episode that will be reflected on the Podbean side. Any of the directories that offer that as well, it should also push to those if you enable it. Down here, you also see that we have Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, WordPress, YouTube, 
and LinkedIn buttons. So what Podbean also gives you the ability to do is connect your various social media channels to your podcast. That way, when you publish an episode, your content will also get pushed to these different directories, uh, the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, but it'll also get pushed to your social media channels by way of a post or an embeddable player or uh, Twitter notification, depending on the specific social media. So not only are you connected to the directories like Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you're also able to connect your social media. And down here also, if you have a video podcast, that'll get pushed to YouTube as well. But if you're saying, you know what, I don't have a video component to my podcast, I can actually say that you can have an auto-generated video created by Podbean that will then get pushed over to YouTube. And what it'll do is it'll take the image, the still frame uh, album art of your podcast, create an audiogram of that, and push that over to your YouTube channel. And this is a great way to grow, not just in the directories, but also grow in other ways outside of just the, what I would call the podcasting ecosystem, right? We always talk about engagement. We always talk about growth. This is one of those ways that Podbean makes it really easy for you to grow your show. And if I click on episode settings here, I have the ability to select my season number, my episode number, what kind of episode it is, create a small summary uh, for those who are familiar with the Apple podcast environment, having not a full summary, but maybe just a quick sentence is a great way to lead people in to check out your show. We have a variety of different settings here, and I can either save my content as a draft and publish it later. I can go ahead and click schedule episodes so my content comes out at a later date and time. Uh, pro tip, it's really great to schedule out content, let's say two or three episodes in advance. It makes your workflow that much easier. But let's say I just wanna publish my content now. I can go ahead and click on this publish now button. And what I've done here is I've published this content to my channel. Now, we see that we have a couple of different things that have popped up. The first thing that we should see is at the top, it says you can embed and share the episode to your social medias or click here to add a transcript for the episode. And what's great about that is Podbean has built in its own transcription service. So for any episode, you can have transcriptions for your podcast. Uh, there is a small fee per minute, but what's great is those will be attached to your podcast episode and any of the directories such as the Podbean app that accept it, it'll show up on there as well as on the embeddable player, which brings us to the embeddable player. Any of your podcast episodes will have this embeddable player here that you can customize to your podcast branding. So I think this looks kind of cool. It's very Halloween-y. I am a very Halloween-y person, but I can go ahead and copy the widget code here. I can go ahead and change the font color. I can go ahead and change various uh, points of the font, such as what font we'd like to use. And I can also change the share and download buttons from uh, showcasing on here. Now, we have two different kinds of embeddable players. We have the classic and we have the stylish. Both are pretty cool and have their own uh, feature set to them, but we have a lot of different things that you can do with that embeddable player. And also, not only do you have an embeddable player per episode, but you also have an embeddable player that you can do in a playlist format. So let's say you want to put a collection of your podcast together. Let's say you are a podcast that does both interviews and solo shows. What you can do is you can put all of those interviews into a podcast player that you can put on your podcast website and people can listen to all of your interviews back to back. Uh, you can break it down by season number, by episode tags and a variety of different conditions here. So not even talking about all the other services we provide, but just talking about what you can do, how easy it is to upload an episode and how many ways you can get into more eyes and ears, I think is a really powerful part of our platform. Once we've gone ahead and talked about publishing an episode, the next thing I like to show people is all of the statistic information that you have. So before we hop into that, can yeah. I just ask you one quick question? So Please. for both for the embeddable player, like where would one share that? Like, so to say uh, someone not familiar with, with one of those, like why would that be something that they'd want to use and where would they share it? Sure. So a lot of podcasters want to have their own podcast website and it's really beneficial for a variety of reasons. So any podcaster that starts with Podbean 
gets their own podcast website. There may be people that have also started their podcast website external to Podbean, which is totally cool. What you can do is you can have individual pages on your website and say, okay, you don't just have to listen to us in the various podcasting apps, but if there are specific pipelines that you want to create for your specific episodes, create a page on your website. So you can say, hey, listen to all of my interviews or hey, if you have a podcast that has a variety of different topics that you go over, maybe you can create different players and different pages to highlight those. Uh, one thing I talk about also, because we work with a lot of business clients, you may, for example, have uh, internal podcasts, for example, and public facing podcasts, company branded podcasts for you know, recruitment or thought leadership expansion, things like that. You can also put these on your company's uh, internal pages. You can also put these on your company's website. So there's a lot of different ways that you can leverage that playlist and single player embed code. Very cool. And so if someone listens to it using one of those embedded player, what will it show as in the stats, which we'll walk through in a second? Will it show that it watched was consumed in the Podbean app or where will it say that that, that listen came from? Yeah, it'll showcase it. Uh, as far as I know, it'll showcase it from the browser that they listen to it from. Okay. And I'll actually showcase what we're talking about here because Ben is touching on something we're actually going to talk about here in a second in the awesome. statistics. Awesome. So up here, we have our general overview that we talked about earlier of our yesterday download, seven day, 30 and all time downloads. But then I have this drop down menu here that I can use to select a custom date range to check out how my performance of my podcast has gone over the course of time. Now, anything that I talk about here, unless otherwise specified, is a statistic that pulls from all the directories, meaning if you have your podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Podchaser or any of them, any of the podcast directories that you've submitted your podcast to will feed into this statistics field here. But anything that I talk about where I say it's only specific to the Podbean app, the Podbean ecosystem also has its own uh, directory app. So you can use it to record your podcast and you can listen to your favorite shows using that as well. Some of the statistics are tied just to that Podbean app. But the first thing we're going to talk about here is this graph. This graph here will show you the performance of your podcast over the course of whenever you've selected in your drop down menu here. And if I click on any of these nodes, it's going to go ahead and show me the episode breakdown, what made up that listenership on that specific month, that specific day. Over here on the right hand side, it's going to show me my total number of downloads across the directories, and it's going to show me my listenership uh, over year to year or month to month, depending on what I've chosen in that drop down. Also over here where we have this user interaction field, the Podbean app allows people to follow your show, it allows people to leave comments on specific episodes, and they can like your shows as well. So this user interaction data is based specifically on your listenership within the Podbean app. So you get a nice idea as to how the people using our ecosystem, which I think has about a million people using it per month actively, uh, you can see how they're looking at your content. We then come to our where does your audience come from field, which is going to show us where in the world your content is being listened to. Over here on the right hand side, you're going to see a quick breakdown of some of the uh, top countries. If we go ahead and click on view more, we have an even more granular view of all the different countries that you've had playback in. But for the US, for Canada, for Australia, we can also go ahead and click on these individual uh, countries and break this down based on state and province. And we're actually looking to develop this a little bit further too. So stay tuned, you may see some uh, different countries pop up over here on the course of time too. So now we come to a uh, bunch, of dis uh, bunch of different statistics here. One being the download by time of day field, which I think is probably one of our most uh, more, one of our most powerful tools here because it speaks to a couple of different use cases. So a lot of people say, well, if I subscribe to your show, then I'm automatically going to get a notification when the show comes out. I'm going to listen to it. It's going to be a good time. But what happens in life? We all have different things that we do, right? Some of us have kids, some of us uh, host shows, some of us do a myriad of different things. So you might not get that engagement, even if somebody is subscribing and compound that with episode over episode, part of marketing, the second part of it that a lot of people don't speak about is retention. So how can you retain your listeners? One thing is meet them where they're at. This downloads by time of day chart is a heat map of when people are most engaging with your content. 
And if we highlight your cursor over any of these uh, nodes, we'll be able to see that, for example, Wednesday at 8, we're getting a uh, relatively good listenership as opposed to, let's say, Wednesday at 5 p.m. So what I tell people is, let's say your general publishing schedule was, you know what, I want to go ahead and publish, let's say, Monday at 3 p.m. But you're seeing that people are listening Sunday at 3 p.m. What you can do and what this data can tell you is I can go ahead and publish my content maybe at 2.55 p.m. on Sunday. And if I know that most of my audience is engaging with my content around that time, this is a way that I can really maximize when the most people are able to digest my content. So it helps you with a posting schedule, I think. That's awesome. Down here, we have our download sources. Simply put, this is what we were talking about earlier. This will tell you where and how your podcast is being engaged with. So it'll tell you whether, it'll tell you the different uh, devices types that people are using to engage your content. It'll tell you uh, whether it's a browser, it'll tell you uh, a couple of different things here. So in general, you have the ability to see where people and how people are consuming your content. And even here, you can see that people are listening within the Podbean app, Google Chrome. And whenever you see this others field, that's just when a source is undefined. So we couldn't pull a source for that. Now down here, we have this top 10 most downloaded episodes field. Um, simply put, shows you the activity of your top 10 most downloaded episodes within that drop down range that we chose earlier. And this user retention field is pretty cool. This user retention field gives you the ability to see how people using the Podbean app are coming back to listen to your content over a seven day period. So what this tells you is people using the Podbean app, when they listen to your show, what is their behavior week to week coming back and engaging with more content? This could be a great way for you to see how your content is performing in the Podbean app over the course of a seven week period. So you can create content or uh, choose to not create content based on that as well. Now, all of our statistics also are IAB certified. Um, I put that out there. Most of the podcast hosts that are worth their salt have the IAB certification as well. Uh, so we are proud to say that our statistics are IAB certified as well. Now, if we click on the left-hand side here, we click on this distribution dropdown. This is where we have access to a variety of uh, great tools as well. So we have the embeddable player that we talked about earlier. This is where you can create that playlist that we spoke about. If I click on podcast apps, this is going to give me a really easy way to submit my podcast to the various directories. Now, a lot of people, when they start a podcast, they go, there's so many different directories. How do I choose which podcast directories I want my podcast in? And if there's lots of them, then where do I even start? If you're with Podbean, you can go ahead and click on any of these podcast apps, and it gives you the easiest, most direct way to submit your podcast to said directory. A lot of them that have what's called a single click option, all you have to do is select the check boxes, say, I want Podbean to submit this on my behalf. And give it a couple of days, the podcast will be available in said directory. If there's a directory, for example, like Apple Podcasts, where you have to uh, go on their end and you have to create a username and password and log in and manage it on their end, we give you a great place to manage all that content as well. So you don't have to go to a variety of different websites. All of that is hosted under one umbrella here. And the more directories that we're able to insert into this podcasting app section, the more you'll continue to see. Uh, we also offer the social share section, as we spoke about earlier. This is where you can connect your different social media accounts so that the podcast content gets pushed to those. Over here, we also have our podcast website field. I talked briefly earlier about the podcast website. Uh, this is where you can choose one of many of these customizable templates that we have. You can upload your own, uh, you can upload your own art. You can create various pages. If you have your own domain, you can set that up with Podbean as well. Uh, most podcasts, when they start up, it'll say, for example, mypodcast.podbean.com. But a lot of podcasters really like the flexibility and uh, overall use that our website capabilities offer. So people will just say, you know what, I want to use Podbean as that. I'll go to, for example, godaddy.com, buy my own uh, domain, mypodcast.com. And then you can set that up here. So when someone goes to that link, they'll come right to your Podbean website here. And then if we click customize, we have a variety of different customization tools here. What's really cool also is if you see this listen on section, a lot of people say, well, 
Podbean is great. Apple Podcasts is great. But I use Amazon Music to consume my content. What you can do is using that podcast directory that we talked about earlier, anytime you submit a podcast with Podbean and type in the URL from that directory, it'll show up as a button on your podcast website. So let's say someone wants to listen on the Podbean app or on iHeartRadio or on Player FM. They can go ahead and click on each of these uh, links and it'll link out to that specific player. So we're trying to give people as much flexibility as possible in order to access your content. And you see all these things around here, design, CSS editor. If you're somebody that's got knowledge of HTML and CSS, you can customize the website based on that. If we click design, this gives you a variety of different things that you can uh, manipulate just right off the block on the podcast website. And then we have a variety of different ways that you can customize various uh, points of this too. So right here, you see that I have a, a box that I created. So I can go ahead and insert text. I can go ahead and insert an image. Uh, this is great for those, let's say, that have uh, different donation buttons, right, or different social media links. You can go ahead and create a box that says, follow me here and insert all your links there, donate to me here. It gives you a lot of flexibility from that way. Also, here's how your episodes will show up on the website. If I go ahead and click on any of these to play them. On today's cool, episode. Oh, you don't have to hear me there too. But what's cool is you see this player down here at the bottom. That player, and when you're doing this on mobile also goes as well, is it doesn't, it doesn't have to take you to a separate page. But what can happen is you can have the player playing right down at the bottom and you can still continue to navigate around that page. So it gives users the flexibility to continue to learn about you, your podcast, and integrate with all the things that you got going on on there while listening to your content in the process, as opposed to having 14 or 15 tabs open, or to the wise as a previous uh, computer technician, multiple tabs open. It's not a good thing. Please close your tabs. Thank you. Thank you very much. So <laughs> now, we have this section down here for settings. This is where we can manage different facets of our feed, uh, different general options that we have. We also have a plugins marketplace here too, where if you see something that Podbean, let's say, uh, doesn't necessarily have at the moment, and let's say you're a developer and you say, I wanna go ahead and insert my technology with Podbean, those plugins will give you even more capabilities. So for example, we have Zapier, that's one of our apps in here uh, for the plugins. So you can go ahead and include that to say, you know what, I want to expand more of what we have. Uh, MailChimp also has an integration with us. So if you integrate Podbean, or if you integrate MailChimp with Podbean, you can have emails go out that push whenever a new episode goes live. So even more integrations that we have. Uh, down here, we have this ads management section, which shows a variety of different options. Now, you see we have promote your podcast by advertising on other podcasts, make money by joining ads marketplace, and use Podbean dynamic ad insertion. Uh, Podbean's dynamic ad insertion allows you to take these audio ads that you get from ads marketplace or that you get from advertisers external to Podbean. And instead of in your recording software saying, okay, I got to insert this ad here, I got to insert this ad here, but then once this ad is gone, then I got to re-upload the episode. And it could be a hassle. What the dynamic ad insertion does is for any episode or across all episodes, you can say, okay, at this specific timestamp, I want Podbean to automatically drop in this audio ad for me. And we'll drop it in there. That will get pushed to all the different directories. Now, kind of talking to that, people ask, how can I monetize my podcast? And one of the ways is by joining Podbean's ads marketplace. So any podcast that joins the ads marketplace is open to any advertiser that's looking to run advertising on a podcast. The advertiser has an ability to look uh, or to upload their audio podcast or their audio ad. They can go in and check out all the different podcasts that fit keywords, different conditions. And if they select your podcast, then you can get paid to run ads on your show. Also, a lot of podcasters have asked, that's great. And one thing, well, maybe they, yeah, they've asked it. <laughs> one of the things that I always say too, is when we have our podcast, one of the best ways to promote your podcast is by doing cross promotion, right? Going on other people's shows or even running your ads on another podcast. Sometimes that can be a bit difficult to coordinate. Sometimes it can be super easy. One thing we wanted to do for podcasters is say, listen, 
if you want to run your podcast's ad on another show, then let's just put this right in your dashboard. And what would happen is if we click this view more button, it's gonna allow us to create a campaign for our podcast. We can go ahead and tell people about what our podcast is about, choose where in the world that advertising should run, choose the categories that best match our podcast, choose whether we want our ad to be in the pre, the mid or the post roll, basically meaning the beginning, middle or end of a podcast. And then we have the ability to showcase uh, different impressions here. So for a flat fee, we will hook your podcast ad up to different podcasts and we'll be able to match those impressions. So it's a really great way for you if let's say you have an event coming up or you just wanna to continue to promote your podcast in general, you can go ahead and have a right in your dashboard, a great way to promote your podcast on other podcasts. So this is something that I will always recommend for people to utilize if they're looking to grow their show. I, I can't stress that enough, what John just said there about go, ad, advertising on podcasts is such a powerful medium for advertising because this is proven people that already like podcasting. So you don't have to convince them to like podcasting. They're already there. They just they, So then all you're trying to do is convince them to come check out your show, which is a far easier sell. The other question that I had with looking at this is, what is the split? So if someone starts getting people using their show for advertising purposes, like what, how much money will they make? I believe it's a 70-30 as of right now. From your podcast dashboard, we've gone over a lot of the features that you have, but we also talk about a lot of different tool sets that we have. You saw before that I had multiple channels under my umbrella that I was managing. Not only can I do public facing content, I can also create what's called premium content. So let's say people are really digging what you're putting down and you're like, okay, I'm looking for different ways to monetize my podcast. What you can do is you can sell some of your episodes and you can create a channel that you can manage under that umbrella of that one login. So when people go to your show, they can open up the Podbean iOS or Android app and they can see, okay, this person is also selling podcast episodes. And for a flat fee, they can go ahead and access all of that paid content too, which again, when we think about podcast monetization, people often just run right to ads, which definitely it's a great way to monetize your show. But the thing is, I always tell people, think about the broader things that you can do with your podcast as a brand. If people really like the content that you're putting out, then why not sell some of that content? Why not make some exclusive content for people that they can access that's completely external? So using the Podbean iOS and Android app, people could access that separate channel and they could purchase that content to listen to within the Podbean iOS and Android apps. Um, we also offer a patron program. So people can go on, at, uh, I believe that's at an, our unlimited plus tier. They can go in and they can donate money to you and you can select various tiers that, actually, let me go ahead and see if I can pull it up. Patron.podbean.com. So one thing that we offer podcasters also at our unlimited plus tier is the ability to get recurring funding for their podcast through Podbean's patron program. Um, so what people can do is they can donate money to you and you can set specific tiers within these donation sets. And based on these different donation sets, you can offer different prizes to, or uh, yeah, I'll say prizes, different prizes to your podcast community. And that could be anything like exclusive content, exclusive live streams, whatever you decide. And the lowest could be, for example, a dollar all the way up to a hundred, 200, $300. Think about some of the most successful crowdfunding campaigns that you've seen out there for different projects. This is no different than that. But again, it's another way that you can use Podbean to monetize your content, which ultimately can help you develop more of your show as well. There's a lot of different content that we have. Let me actually just go down here. So monetization, we have all that premium, patron, all that. I don't know when to stop talking because we have so much. Now, one thing that we also offer, as I alluded to earlier, was we offer the Podbean app. So for iOS or Android, you can go on, you can download it for free, create a username and password, or if you're a podcast Podbean member already, just log in using that username and password. And you can use the Podbean app for a variety of different content. Firstly, you have the ability to listen to podcast episodes. We are a directory, so not just Podbean hosted content, but content that is hosted elsewhere. 
also can exist and be listened to within the Podbean ecosystem. Uh, we actually just released a brand new group recording feature also. So with that group recording feature, you can have up to eight people on this group call at once. And when you're in that group call, people can join, you can invite people via email. They have to just log into the Podbean app. You can copy the link. There's a variety of ways that you can bring people in. But what's awesome about that is you can now record your content from anywhere in the world. You can do remote recordings, remote interviews. The one thing that I really think is powerful about it is instead of only getting once the group recording is done, a single track MP3 file that is everybody all together, where it's basically the culmination of your voice, which sounds super great, and then everybody else's, which is based on their network, you actually get each individual host's individual track that was saved locally on their phone, which means that basically every individual track will be as clear and pristine as possible, which you can then put all these individual tracks into your software editor of choice, edit them as you would a normal podcast, and basically sound like you're in the same room with all the people that are part of this group recording. Uh, this is a brand new feature that we just released. And it's audio only, which again, makes it a really lightweight solution. Uh, one thing for me that we put out is I love the lightweight solutions that are, hey, you just want to start a podcast, even if you're starting a podcast for a really big need or just looking to talk to friends and have a podcast where it's just a group of friends, you get that clear quality and you get that manipulation in your software of choice. All of that stuff can be downloaded right from your media manager. So it really gives podcasters of any size and any background, the ability to get the clearest audio possible all right in their fingertips. So cool. So for, if someone's using that, that's all conducted within the Podbean app, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then anybody who would want to join, would they also need the app? Yep. Anybody who wants to join the group recording needs to download the Podbean app okay. and then just create a username and password. Uh, the great news with downloading the Podbean app and creating username and password is it's completely free. Okay. So if you wanted to go on a limited audio and limited plus and use us to host your content, then, you know, there are paid tiers that we have. We also do have a five gigabyte free plan for people that are trying it out before they uh, sign on the dotted line. But anybody that is just coming in, let's say, for uh, just to be part of the group recordings or the live streaming capability that we have, all they need to do is just download the free app and then just log in using a username and password that they create. Super. That's awesome. So for this feature too, is it accessible even on the free plan as well or no? Yeah. So the recording, so what I'm talking about for the group recording yeah. and for the record and publish, which are both really cool, uh, both of those are eligible when you open up the Podbean app on a free okay. account. Uh, the restriction is that you have five gigs five of, right, five gigabyte limit per, uh, for lifetime until okay. you do paid, and then it's unlimited and unmetered bandwidth, which is another really powerful thing that I, uh, I didn't talk about because it's not like a tangible thing. Um, if you sign up for a paid account with Podbean, you get unlimited downloads and unlimited storage. What that means, or an unlimited bandwidth, what that means is that you don't have to worry about the amount of content that you're uploading per month. And you don't have to worry about the amount of listenership eating up any sorts of cost or bandwidth. Uh, we have lots of podcasts who are getting millions and millions of downloads per month and lots of podcasters who are uploading lots of content. The last thing they want to or have to worry about is, okay, do I have a limit on that? Or if I'm crossing into this threshold, how much more am I gonna have to pay for if an extra 2000 people listen to my show? With Podbean, once you're on any of those paid accounts, you have the ability to have unmetered bandwidth and the uh, unlimited downloads. So Sweet. it's not like a feature that you press on that I'm showcasing. It's just a really great part of our platform here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Good to know. What, what you're seeing here under this record and publish section also is you can do the group recording like we talked about, but you can also record your own content. So it could just be you in your headphones recording right into the Podbean app. And again, it's going to be clear quality because it's coming based on a local recording that's on your side. You can also use different sound effects and uh, some light editing tools to make sure that your podcast sounds even better. And we give you some pretty heavy post-production tools, such as the ability to uh, cut out specific sections, merge intro and outro music, merge two sections together. Uh, we give you a lot of tools that are really right at the uh, fingertips here. And then you can upload this content right to your uh, podcast channel on Podbean, right from the Podbean app. 
So yeah, so the big things that we have here within the app are the ability to record and the ability to group record and the ability to listen. I haven't even talked about our live streaming platform yet, which gives you the ability to do a live podcast. So how we were just talking about the group recording, having about eight different co-hosts come in and join you for your recording. You also have the capability to use both Podbean from the desktop and from your iOS or Android device to run your own live stream. What's great about that is that live stream can either be private or uh, unlisted, I should say. That live stream can either be unlisted or it can be public facing, meaning that people can call in and they can join your show, they can listen to your show, they can use the chat in order to uh, integrate with you and engage with you during your show. Uh, they can also donate to you too. So we talked about monetization before. The live stream platform gives you the ability to donate to your favorite uh, live shows. And we have a lot of podcasters who find a lot of success using the live stream, both from a completely different standpoint of just having the live show be the main thing that they do to creating a second or third source of income for their podcast as well. So we have a lot of different elements that a podcaster can use in order to, like I was saying at the top of the, uh, the conversation here, really do whatever they could want to with their podcast. So the last thing I also want to highlight is I'm talking a lot about the general podcaster, somebody who wants to have their podcast in as many eyes and ears as possible for different reasons, a lot of public facing content. Uh, but if you are at a place of work or you're a business thinking, hey, we'd really love to have the latest and greatest technology to integrate with our workforce and engage our employees, we also offer an enterprise solution for our people. So the ability to create public content like we just saw is available for our business users. But what we also give business users the ability to do is to create secure private content as well. So content that let's say if you're delivering training or you have fireside chats that you wanna keep within your organization. And let's say maybe you have uh, weekly meetings that you wanted to share to the sales team, but maybe the marketing team doesn't necessarily need to need it or need to access it. You can create secure content that is username and password accessible. Uh, you can also have your company single sign on SSO login enabled with it too. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with that, you may go to a job and instead of just typing in your username and password, they may say use SSO. And it's the email and password that you use across all facets of logging into access said content. You can integrate your company's SSO in that way. And we work with a lot of different companies under our umbrella here. Uh, it's a, become a really great tool for companies to engage their workforce in lots of different ways. Audio and video podcasts are available for it as well. And we've seen people doing lots of great work with it. Um, we work with any of the SSO integrations and also we have the ability to have that content accessed using the embeddable players that we talked about earlier and through our special Podbean Pro app, which is an app that is free for business users. They can go ahead and type in the name of their company. They can set that up in their administrative settings. And then anybody that goes to the Podbean Pro app who types in that company's uh, name will be able to use their login information to access the content that they've been given access to. And this is a great way to help people raise engagement for said content. And then we have an entirely uh, we all the and then all the analytic data that we showcased before exists for our business clients and then we have an extra one called user engagement intel which is really cool because it shows you per episode the timestamp listen back of each episode so you could be let's say having like a you can have like an hour of a recording and say okay cool i can actually see my overall workflow uh, workforce who's listening to this is stopping listening at the 30 minute mark or the 35 minute mark even down to a user level so you can see individual users that might be let's say engaging with the content more or less than others uh, we do block out the username but it does give you that user detail so it's an even deeper set of analytics that you have access to so yeah, there's every time I think like, oh, what else should I talk about? Um, there's always so much that we have coming through the pipeline. There's always so many solutions that we offer to people. Um, but I think those are really the big ones. And then, like I was talking about the ad marketplace for advertisers, I can do a brief highlight of as well, if you're cool with it. 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. And then also, I get a ton of questions about video uh, with Podbean too. So those are two things that I would love for you to cover. Okay, cool. Something else that we offer on our platform too, as I talked about earlier, is our ads marketplace. So the ads marketplace serves two different goals. The first goal is businesses looking to take advantage of podcast advertising can create various campaigns that Podbean basically takes, uh, stays out of the way of. We basically give you the ability to run your ads on whatever shows are under the Podbean umbrella. And you can see all of the different podcast uh, performances based on geolocation, based on download numbers, based on a variety of keywords that you insert. We try, the, the ads marketplace gives podcast advertisers the ability to choose whatever campaign settings they would like in terms of cost and in terms of funnel in order to run podcast ads on whatever podcast they'd like to under the Podbean umbrella here. And they get the ability to see exactly where that content is running. They get to see a lot of information about each individual podcast or like their locations their download numbers uh, and a variety of different uh, statistic information here. And then they have the ability to see the performance of each of those ads in the pre, the mid or the post roll, uh, which is something that I appreciate too, because when we think about podcast ads, a lot of it really is B2C. So a business will reach out to a podcaster and say, you get this amount of downloads, I'm expecting this. But if there's no way to track those metrics, then you could be in a situation where the podcaster says, okay, I'm seeing over the amount of impression, so we need to renegotiate. Or the inverse, a business may say, hey, you didn't reach the goal that we expected. Using the ads marketplace, not only is it really easy for a business to upload their podcast and take advantage of podcast advertising, but both parties can keep visual track using our statistics of how many impressions that advertisement is getting. The second facet of it is that a podcast or looking to make money with their podcast can register for the ads marketplace. And once they register for the ads marketplace, their podcast becomes eligible to have ads run on it as well. So if a podcaster sees your podcast and says, this would be a great fit for us, they have the ability to uh, choose your podcast and they can run the campaign on your show. And then you can get paid for running an advertisement that you choose. I think that's probably most of the things that the Podbean ecosystem offers. I'm sure that uh, anybody that comes over will also see a litany of other things that we didn't get to cover in today's conversation. But yeah, there's a lot of different offerings that Podbean offers. And us having that modus operandi of we want to give podcasters the ability to do anything they want with podcasting, I think really continues to ring true here. We try to create the play. We try to create an environment for podcasters to do their best work, to be able to have all the tools, and for us to basically stay out of the way. You shouldn't have to learn all this crazy technology in order to upload your show and in order to do your best work. Your best work should be the creative side. Your best work shouldn't have to be having a PhD in computer science in order to use the platform. For sure. Yeah, no, and you covered a ton here, and I think that's the, usually the first thing I say when it comes to questions that I receive about Podbean is... Basically, if you want to do it, you probably can. Uh, but I get a lot of specific questions about video. And you've mentioned that a few times. So sure. could, you, could you show us like, how that whole system works? Because I got a ton of questions about that. Yeah, definitely. Let me see if I can pull up. So if we're talking about video podcasting with Podbean. Uh, we have the ability for anyone who's on our limited plus and above uh, tiers to upload a video podcast to Podbean. Now, what's great is you can upload both audio and video to one feed. I usually recommend having separate feeds for both audio and video because remember, Podbean offers you all the tools to do the things that you want to do. The different directories, though, if you have what's called a mixed RSS feed, where it's audio and video, they may, let's say, take down your podcast or they may stop pushing podcast episodes if they notice that there's a mixed RSS feed. So I always tell people that you can do whatever you want to on the Podbean side. But when it comes to the video and you're just like, hey, if video is a component that we really need, then I would recommend having two separate channels. We actually have one of our clients, uh, CIA, which is the Culinary Institute of America, that CIA, uh, who uses exclusive uh, podcast video using Podbean. So what's great with them is that they offer up a variety of different uh, recipes that they also write in the description. They also link out to a website where you can see those recipes and they show you a video 
of how the recipe is made and what the food looks like at the end. But this right here is in the Podbean website here. Uh, all the videos are also accessible in the Podbean app as well if you've uploaded a video there. But just to showcase. <laughs> So just to showcase, it looks almost like any other video platform. And then if you're watching the video podcast on your podcast app of choice that allows video, then it'll look just the same as any other video on there as well. Very cool. So, so if you were to send this to say Spotify, it would look like any other video that's been uploaded to Spotify? I'm going to be very careful with the words that I choose because I really want to make clear that Podbean offers you the ability to do it. Um, Spotify has video capabilities as we've seen with some of their exclusive content. Um, as of right now, pushing video to Spotify is not something that Spotify offers uh, to the hosts. However, okay. you know, for example, if you've seen some of the more popular podcasts that have videos, they obviously offer it, but I think it's more of an exclusive thing. Um, okay. If you wanted to see how this would look in a directory that's not Podbean, you can use Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts does accept okay. video. So for example, this is the Apple Podcast website. And this is one of our clients, the Culinary Institute of America. And as you see, they have podcast episodes. It looks just as any podcast episode list would, right? But if we go ahead and click play, for example, Red Red Stew, this sounds good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the play button here. <laughs> Red Red is a spicy bean stew from Ghana that gets its name from its red ingredients. Red kidney beans, red tomatoes, and red dende oil. Red everything. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't even know that that was the thing, so that's awesome. And I'm, I'm assuming that uh, if and when Spotify opens that up to hosts, that Podbean will uh, allow that to be done too? I'm sure it would be an offer that we would definitely entertain. Again, very careful with the words that I choose because um, any – any directory that offers these things, we would always be open to that conversation and creating more opportunities for our uh, podcasting community. For sure, absolutely. Well, well, thanks for walking through that. I think I think those are the major questions that I had, and you walked through a ton of stuff. And believe it or not, there's actually more to walk through. So, so if you do want <laughs> if you do want to check out Podbean, uh, there's, there's links down below so to go ahead and do that. Because if there's like we said, if there's anything that you want to do that you could even think of. It's probably there already, and if not, they're probably working on it. So thank you so much, John. I appreciate you walking through all of this. And is there any closing remarks that you have for anybody who may be on the fence? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to us at contact at podbean.com. Uh, we always try to make ourselves as available as possible to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, we have a variety of different resources that we have for both hosted podcasts and podcasters, like you said, that may be thinking about, you know, why would I want to join Podbean? Um, you could always reach out to us through the email that I said. We also have our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. Everywhere except for Instagram, we are at podbean.com. Over on Instagram, we are at podbean. Um, but I would say that anybody who is considering thinking about the podcast host that they would want to uh, work with, I think really a podcast host has to offer you a variety of different solutions and in a way that is almost limitless. Um, people think of podcast hosts as, okay, I don't want to have a hard drive where I upload all my content manually to and have to have that degree in computer science in order to micromanage, right? It shouldn't be difficult to upload the content that you've created. And I think with Podbean, we've created a solution that's really expansive and also gives you the ability to be limitless in all these different ways. So really when it comes to how you want to grow, manage and develop your podcast, I will always say that Podbean offers the most robust solution out there on the market. And that's not to put down any other competitors. If you go to Podcast Movement, you see that we all talk in general. It's just, um, I think that with Podbean, we offer all of those solutions for anybody that wants to have a uh, great podcasting experience. And if they think of like, hey, can I do this? If we don't offer it, it's, a, it's probably something that we're considering, but we probably already have that offering for you. We want to see your podcast grow, and we'd love to be part of that experience with you. Boom. There you have it. There you have it. Well, thanks so much, John. I appreciate you for doing all of this, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you for the time. Of course.